What's up, everybody? Hi, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, looks like everything is working here. I can see lots of folks coming in. Um, wow, I'm excited to be back. Happy Tuesday. Uh, today is Tuesday, July 28th. Um, at least that's what today is when I'm recording in real time. Some folks may be watching later, um, but a big welcome to everybody who's watching live. Um, that's so cool. We're going to have an interactive conversation. Uh, the best part about these things uh, is not, you know, the time that I'm sharing with you. It really is what everybody else brings to the conversation. Uh, so we do that a bit through the online chat. I also asked a question earlier on Twitter. I got a lot of responses, so I'll share some of those things. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk about learning. We're going to talk about some side hustle ideas. I've got some examples, um, some cool stuff to show you, some new websites, uh, Kickstarter campaign that did fabulously well. Got a question of the day. Um, I actually have a daily challenge this week, which is good. It's a weekly challenge, but you only get it, you know, on one day, um, et cetera. So yeah, let's see. Um, let me know where you're watching from. It's good to see some of our regulars here. Welcome back to Mary Jo. I'm sorry to miss you the past couple weeks, but I'm glad you're here now. And the same to David Hutchinson. What's up, David? David was in uh, New Jersey for a while and then came to California and is now in Tucson, um, I believe. So nice to see the master gaster as always. Randy, let me see if my comment thing is working. There it is. Yes. Hey, Randy, what's up? Um, nice to see Vin from New Jersey. Caleb says, learning how to create funnels for your courses. Awesome. We're going to talk about that uh, here in a little bit. Um, Stephanie is here from outside of Baltimore. Um, Delph, welcome back to you as well. Um, sorry to miss last week. All good. All good. You do you. Glad to have you back though. Um, and lots of other folks, including, is this Shama from Bangladesh? Nice. Awesome. Um, I think it's pretty late there, right? Um, well, thank you for watching. Um, Graham from Ontario, lots of other folks there as well. So we're rebroadcasting on Facebook. He's watching on Facebook along with a couple of people. Um, and of course, um, Love and Treasure on Periscope, watching, always here. Um, great to see you again. And then of course, lots of people on YouTube. Um, if you are just joining, if you're here for the first time, that's awesome, welcome. Um, as I said, my name is Chris Gillibo. This is loosely based on uh, my new book, The Money Tree, um, a story about finding the fortune in your own backyard. Um, this book came out in April. And I was so excited to do a 40 city book tour, um, but that book tour turned into a zero city book tour for reasons that you probably are, are aware of. Um, and so I just decided to start coming on and, and chatting with folks. Um, it's been really cool because even though I love the book tour and I love you know, like having a longer time, you know, with a group of people that are all in one place, this has also been really cool because we're able to talk to people in Bangladesh and Ontario and Baltimore and Tucson and everywhere else. Um, you know, all at once. Um, so it's a little bit different, but you know, pros and cons to everything. And when I say loosely based, like that's kind of the starting point. Uh, so the money tree is all about financial security and using a skill you already have to create an extra source of income, kind of the same principles that I talk about in my daily podcast, Side Hustle School. Um, but we tend to use that as a jumping off point. Uh, so it's not, you know, super promotional. I'm not trying to pitch anything. I just want to kind of share some ideas and also um, to hear from, from all of you as well. Um, so uh, if you do me a big favor and click the thumbs up button, those watching on YouTube, that would be very cool. Um, even if you're watching later, if you click the thumbs up button, that's just awesome. It shows YouTube that people are actually, um, you know, enjoying this and real people are watching. Um, you can also subscribe to the channel and then click the little bell button to get notifications uh, whenever I go live. Um, and if you're watching elsewhere, then that's, that's cool as well. Um, so let's see. Um, oh, also about the comments. Um, I'm not able to respond to everything in real time just because I'm doing like several things at once here. Um, but I try to get to as many as possible and I kind of go back and forth. So feel free to post a comment or a question or anything. Um, and I'll periodically like return to those throughout the broadcast. I will also go back and read everything at the end after the broadcast, um, just because that informs everything that we do next. Um, so speaking of conversations, interactive conversations, let's see, what did I want to mention? Um, every other week, um, I've also been doing a group Zoom call, um, which is a little bit more detailed than this. It actually goes about 90 minutes, and we have a lot of other people on video as well. So we actually, we're actually like delving into people's side hustle ideas and helping them find next steps and such. Um, if you would like to sign up for that, it's totally free. Um, you can do so at this link here. And I mentioned that because we actually have a conversation coming up um, this Thursday. 
And then let's see what else. Um, for those who are on Facebook or who are into Facebook, we have a group um, that is all about the third way. The third way is a concept in the money tree, uh, a group of people who are all trying to create that, fi that financial security um, by using a skill that they already have and such. Uh, so you're more than welcome to join there and contribute. I'm not very active there myself just because I don't use Facebook a ton, um, but I try to pop in from, from time to time. Okay. So question of the day, let's get that going. Cause I got a lot to share with you here, some websites and an audio question and some more. I want to talk about learning, um, share with you some of the stuff that I have been learning and, um, also just some principles of learning that have been helpful for me. Hopefully that will help somebody else as well. So question of the day, um, I, at some point I'll probably ask like, what, what are you learning? And so feel free to share that now if you want. But the question was more specifically, what is a normal life skill? that um, you have actually never acquired. So this is actually something that you don't necessarily want to acquire, okay? Um, so it could be like cooking or changing a tire. Those are a couple of examples. Could be a lot of different things. What is a normal life skill? Um, and we should probably put normal in quotes, right? Because what's normal, you know? But what is a so-called normal life skill um, that you actually have never acquired? Um, and I actually have a lot of th those. So this is not something to be embarrassed about. It's actually like, you know, join the club, right? So I'm gonna pick one person um, from the comments, which could be from, from anywhere. And I will send you a copy of the new book, um, or actually my side hustle sidekick, Jed, will send you a copy of the new book. Um, and his email is jed at sidehustleschool.com. So I will pick a winner in a moment and you can contact him and he will send you a copy of the book. Um, a print version if you're in the States, um, an inter a digital version if you are international. So um, let us see here. Let me catch up and see what's going on. Um, Riza, is it Riza or Riza? Um, been learning on starting up my YouTube channel. Awesome. Um, nice seeing you today. Good to see you as well. Um, Faisal is joining from India. Got other folks from the UK. Um, you from Singapore. So fun. You guys are awesome. Um, okay, let me scroll a little bit. So many different comments. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, you don't see the Facebook comments and vice versa, just because, you know, Facebook and YouTube hate each other. But that's why I try to feature some different comments so you can kind of see what other people see as well. Hey, Sean, what's up? Welcome back. Oh, Selena said hi from Switzerland. You just got, got caught in some, some rain. I hope you got out of the rain. Uh, the Zoom meeting this week, I believe, is at 5 p.m. Pacific, um, but I could be wrong about that. So if you're on the list, you'll get an email about it. I think it's either 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. Pacific time. Okay, so I'm starting to get some answers here. So a normal life skill that you have just never acquired, you know, for whatever reason. Um, so you from Singapore says baking. Cool. Um, Melissa, home repairs. That's me for sure. I'm definitely in that category. Um, Selena says no clue. Good writing. Um, sewing. Is sewing a normal life skill? Uh, maybe it is. Um, I, I have never, I don't know anything about sewing either. So unblocking the sink. Okay. That's a good one. Michelle says changing a flat tire. I don't really know how to do that either. I think technically I know how to do it, but um, the number of times I have successfully done it are very minimal. Oh, this is good. I like this one from Stephanie. Um, does not being able to hold your breath underwater count. That's fun. Um, I'm sure. I mean, like I said, normal, what is normal? You know, normal is, is what we decide it to be. And abnormal is often a label, you know, that's applied. Abnormal is like this marginalization label, you know, it's like, oh, that's so weird. That's so unusual. Um, that's, that's what people tend to say about well, not people, but like a lot of people tend to say about those who are self-employed or anybody who wants to do something different in life. It's like, oh, you're so abnormal. And I'm like, well, maybe, you know, maybe what, what I'm doing is actually quite, um, normal, uh, learning how to bake sourdough bread. Awesome. I have, I have, are you learning? Maybe you're learning how to do that now, actually. Okay. So I probably got my, my questions confused in terms of, um, what are you learning versus what have you never acquired? Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up here soon. Um, let's see, fixing an engine, Graham, I have no idea how to do that. Mary Jo says how to grill a steak, practical electronics for home repairs. 
Well, look at I, so the master gaster can't think of anything. That's great. You have you have a lot more life skills than me, I'm sure. Um, TikTok. Maybe that's what you're learning now, because um, TikTok is new. I don't know if it's a normal skill. Okay, so um, I there's lots of great answers there, and there's more that are still coming. Um, so let us move on. I really liked Stephanie's answer, Stephanie Stockwell. I don't think I have chosen you as a winner before. If I have. Um, then let me know and we'll pick somebody else. Um, uh, but Stephanie, I would love to send you a copy of the book. Um, send the note to Jed, uh, Jed at side school.com and he will get that to you. Thank you everybody else for all of your other answers. Okay. Um, so would love to show you a few websites here. Let's talk about side hustles and, um, we're going to focus more on this topic of learning, but I actually was kind of inspired. Let's see if I can hop over here. All right. And I might take myself off the screen in a second, but let's see how it, how it works. There's always a couple things here on my screen that are different from what all of you see. So just make sure I can get to where, okay. Let us actually, okay, we've got three websites we're gonna look at. Um, let us start over here, simple, sentimental. Let me just check to make sure, okay, my microphone is still working, that's good. One time I did this and I, my microphone was muted whenever I switched the scenes um, in the software basically and um, I talked for like two and a half minutes and then like I finally noticed in the comments because I'm doing more than one thing. People are like, I couldn't hear you. I'm like, sorry about that, but I think it's working now. Okay, simple, sentimental. Um, dot com. So I, I'm often hearing from people who are doing stuff on Etsy or want to like artists, anybody who wants to sell kind of handcrafted goods, uh, or sometimes they're even, uh, I don't want to say mass manufactured, but you know, they're designed once and then they're reproduced, um, and they're struggling, right? So we have this story coming up, um, about this woman, I think her name is Taylor and she started this business when she was in college, I believe as a freshman. Um, if I'm not mistaken. And at first she was trying to do, um, what was she trying to do at first? It was like posters or something like posters and art prints. Now everybody in the world does posters and art prints. Like it's a very, very saturated market. So she wasn't successful. Um, now you can see, let me see if I can, sorry, if I'm making you dizzy here, what do I want to go to shop? Oh, here it is. Okay. Let me close that out. So long story short, we have the whole story coming up on the podcast. Long story short, um, she decided to focus on this thing called bridesmaid proposal boxes, um, which I had never heard of before, but apparently this is a thing. This is a trend that started a few years ago. And she discovered these bridesmaid proposal boxes. Um, I'll come back here for a second. Um, on Etsy, other people selling them. And she thought, well, that's interesting, but there were also a bunch of complaints. Um, so people were saying, oh, I didn't get everything that was in the picture. Like in the picture, it has all this stuff, but when I actually ordered it, it didn't, it wasn't there. And then also I had to put it together myself. So it was kind of like a DIY kind of kit. Whereas, you know, a lot of people are like, I, if I buy the, the box, I want it to be, you know, prepared and, and, you know, presented well and all that. So she started focusing on that and, um, let's go back. And the long story short is. She paid her way through college with this. She paid for all of her tuition, graduated debt-free. Um, she paid for her own wedding. And this is now her full-time business. I believe it's year four or five. Um, and this is almost a million dollar business. Um, so last year, something like $500,000 in revenue. And this year it's gonna be close to a million dollars. Um, which I was like, that's pretty amazing, right? And because this is this stuff is not that complicated. Like it's well designed. Uh, I'm not being critical. I'm just saying it's not that complicated. Like the the beauty of it is in the system of it and just being consistent and good customer service and just kind of building on from there. So simple sentimental.com. Uh, the whole story is coming up in the podcast. Uh, two more. I may have showed you this one before, but I don't remember. So I thought I would just mention it again. I don't think I did, but um, if I did, well, it's a great project. This is uncuratedco.com. Um, so these are conversational cards, I believe. Cards are some kind of game. Um, yeah, uncurated card game, it's both. It's cards and a game. Um, to encourage like deeper conversations. Um, this was started by a woman who is a first generation Egyptian American. Um, I believe she works as a pharmacist, actually. And when she went away, the story is something like when she went away to college, um, you know, she was having like these deep conversations with people. Uh, but then she, you know, moved to a different city 
um, and you know, didn't have the same circle of friends and was trying to figure out how to facilitate conversations and such. So she created this project, um, which I thought was really cool. And it's also doing really well um, during COVID times, right? Because um, a lot of businesses are struggling during COVID times, but others are thriving, you know, because now it's like everybody's on lockdown or some variation of quarantine, um, social distancing, whatever it is, wherever you are. Um, and so this is like a little game to facilitate, you know, uh, deeper conversations. And I think, I assume it can probably be, be played over zoom or other virtual networks as well. Not sure about that. Okay. One more site. Um, and I will come and take a look at what everybody's posting in just a moment. Let me just finish this up. Okay. So the last site, this is a Kickstarter campaign. Um, I am going to actually, let's see here. Hopefully I'm not going to delete this. Let's see, let's see here. Let me, okay, I'm gone. There we go. It's been a while since I've done that. I um, just want, didn't want to, to clutter the screen here. So this, this is called Bristol 1350. Um, if you'd like to learn more, you can just Google that phrase and you'll find this campaign. We actually feature the guy who made uh, a previous board game um, on the show a couple years ago and he did really well with it. He had a hundred thousand dollar Kickstarter campaign. Um, well, he has just continued to level up. And, you know, this is guy's name is Travis. He's made a bunch of other games as well. And this is his newest one, Bristol 1350, a medieval game of racing, plague, and deceit. Um, now, the, the fun fact or the backstory is they were actually working on this game, which is, you know, about the plague uh, for two years, right? So it actually has nothing to do with COVID-19. Um, and they actually kind of wondered, you know, when they launched this Kickstarter campaign, you know, is, is the timing right for this? Like, are we, you know, being insensitive? Um, but they, but he actually wrote a fair amount about that in this, in this Kickstarter campaign and explained also that he'd been working on it for two years and such. So this is a, the reason why I want to show it to you, this is a masterwork of, of crowdfunding. Like if you ever want to do a Kickstarter campaign, you should go and look at this. Um, because first of all, the results, you know, 16,000 backers pledged more than $900,000, uh, to bring this project to life. And it's not a fluke. Um, it's like, there's so much depth and so much work that went into this. So it's not, I'm not, not going to ever say it's easy. It's, it's the opposite of easy. It's very hard to do something this way. Um, but you know, worked on something for, for years, you know, commissioned an artist, did lots and lots of research to make sure, you know, the game is as balanced and enjoyable as it can be. And then if you just kind of scroll, I mean, this goes on and on and on and on with lots of information. Um, usually the more information, the better with something like this, because people who don't care will give up people who don't care. will just like, Oh, I don't, I don't need to know about that. But the people who are interested, they actually want to know, they want to see all these high res photos, these close up details. Um, they want to know history. They want to know, you know, just all kinds of stuff. And so there's lots of different rewards. Um, I mean, I could go on and on and on. The short version is, you know, just a hugely successful, um, example of a crowdfunding campaign. So if you ever want to do crowdfunding, I would say, go look at that one and I'll have more to say about that in the podcast at some point. Okay. Um, let us talk a bit about learning. I may or may not get to an audio question I have because I want to make sure we spend some time on this. So let me see what you guys have said. First of all. Um, oh, what have you been learning recently? Let me ask you that. I know some people have already posted their answer to that. Um, but, um, for anybody else, what have you been learning recently? Have you, um, you know, been learning a new skill or, uh, some new topic of knowledge or studying something, you know, what is it? I'll read some of the answers I got on Twitter as well. Let's see here. Um, Dear Money says you love my book. Thank you. I appreciate that. Christine, what's up? Welcome back. Always good to see you as well. Um, let's see here. First time viewer. Oh yeah. Oh, Stephanie was first time viewer. That's cool. Good to see you tuned in and you want a free book. That's nice. Okay. Um, I will come back to your comments, um, in a moment. So the reason why I ask, what have, what have you been learning recently? I'm actually going to look at my other screen over here because Twitter is on my other computer. Let's see if I can move that. If you're like, why is he looking away from me? I'm just looking at the answers I got on Twitter. I should have printed this out before. Um, 
but I ask, what have you been learning recently? I got lots of responses. Um, Jay Money, um, he's a good friend of mine. He publishes, or he used to publish the blog. I think he sold his blog, Budgets Are Sexy. Um, it's one of my favorite blogs I read every day. Um, he says, I've been looking into all the merch uh, that bloggers, creators, influencers are creating so that I can help support. Um, Joanna is learning Cantonese, ice cream making, and story skills. Um, Elizabeth Potts Weinstein, also a good friend of mine for many years, is learning Final Cut Pro. Um, Adam is learning Norse mythology and dungeon mastering. Cool. Oh, I love Angela's answer. Um, she says, this week, how to do a handstand. Last week was how to stand up paddleboard. I was like, that's a great sequence, right? Um, and then lots of other people doing illustration and somebody else doing Final Cut, uh, Marie Kondo, basic woodworking. WordPress, copywriting, et cetera. So the reason why I ask this question is, you know, everything I teach, I'm ultimately, you know, trying to learn myself. Basically, it kind of connects to something in my life. And um, I realized recently that I have not been actively learning, you know, at least I think actively is the word, right? Like I think I'm trying to learn. I'm reading a lot every day, et cetera. But you know, I used to describe myself and say like, okay, well, you know, I'm a writer, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a traveler, I'm a lifelong learner. Like that was like this kind of part of my identity that I, you know, I thought this was really important to me. And so I just realized like, what am I actually learning right now? What am I you know, like choosing to apply myself to? How am I actively learning? And I, I kind of realized like I'm actually not, you know, that much. And so that bothered me a little bit. And so I'm starting to set aside time to study a bit more and you know the the difference between active learning and i guess passive learning or you know whatever the alternative is is with um with active learning it's like you have a bit of an objective and there's certain there's a certain amount of structure to it it doesn't mean that it's like super structured but it just means you're not just like kind of flitting about and like you know a hundred different random topics, but there is some kind of like, okay, I'm trying to go from where I am now to where I would like to be. And maybe, you know, if I'm watching a bunch of online videos, for example, about a topic, sometimes I tend to just skip ahead. I'm like, oh, I don't want to learn that. I'm going to go to something else. But if you're actively studying, at least if it's a topic that you want to learn, then sometimes you kind of have to just sit through some of those things or read or whatever the method is, you know, whatever the medium is. Sometimes you actually have to go through that stuff, even if you don't feel like it, because you know, okay, this is important. Um, you know, if I actually like do this, I'm going to be better afterwards. So I was thinking about it kind of like running or exercise, whatever kind of exercise you do, people who are into meditation, et cetera. Like I, I don't always want to start running. I had to get up, um, pretty early this morning to do my run, you know, to be here and didn't sleep super well last night. And so I wasn't too excited about getting out for my run. But I knew just because I have some experience doing this, I'm like, okay, I'm not excited about this now, but I will be at the end, you know? And I was like at the end, I'm like, okay, I'm feeling great. You know, I'm feeling really good. Going to have a good conversation now. This is great. So it's kind of like that with studying or, you know, learning software, like a couple people have mentioned, um, or, you know, whatever it is. Like, I don't always want to like delve into the technical details or like if you're learning a language, like there's fun parts of learning a language and then there are parts that are not as fun, right? When you're studying like all these subjunctive clauses and some of the grammar is not as fun as like just acquiring vocabulary, but ultimately both are important, right? So for me, I think what I am learning and learning, learning and learning, it's kind of meta, right? What I'm learning is that it's good to allow for flexibility right? I don't want something that is super structured, as I said, but it's also good to say, okay, I have a course of study. Like I have a course of study because if I want to learn Final Cut Pro, like a couple people have talked about, well, you know, you kind of have to like start in one place and then like go a certain progression. And maybe after you have acquired like a base level of knowledge, then you can start to say, okay, you know, I can skip these parts because they're not applicable to me. But in the beginning, you don't actually know. And then sometimes what I found is that the parts that you think are not applicable, they actually turn, turn out to be later. So that's something that I'm going through myself. I'm just, I want to make sure that I am, you know, if I'm trying to encourage people to learn different things and take, take, you know, risks and experiments then I have to be able to, you know, do the same thing. So, um, oh, the other thing I've been doing is like, I always like to ask, you know, how can I, how can something be 
I was going to say easier, but um, I'm not quite sure if that's the right word. I was thinking about keyboard shortcuts or things like I use certain programs all the time on my computer and you know, some of them I'm pretty like proficient with, but others I just, I have like my own workflow and it's not necessarily the best workflow. It's just what I have learned. And so I've started paying attention. I'm like, if it takes me a lot of different keystrokes to do something, there's probably some keyboard shortcut for this that I just have never actually tried to learn. And so once I start doing that, like I learned something and I'm like, wow, this is saving me like so much time. And if I had learned this years ago, then I would have saved, you know, so much time, but I just never took those few minutes to learn it. So I'm just trying to do that more and more, um, myself. So come back to that in a moment with our daily challenge and some other stuff, but let us see what, uh, some of you have to say. I think there's a bunch of questions and, um, comments as well here. So. Um, Brooke says, couldn't come up with what I've been learning lately either. I'm relieved to hear from you that you haven't actively been learning. I can jump in where I am. Yes, you can. You can jump in right where you are. I think that's another thing that's, that's, um, really important is sometimes it's best to start with the end in mind and you're like, okay, I want to learn like the flying trapeze. So that is the ultimate objective, but what do I need to do before that? You know? Um, and I think that way a lot but th there's a problem with it and the, there's a problem with it as well. And the problem is sometimes you don't necessarily know what the end is. And so when you're in that place, then I think the answer is you start, like you start with where you are, just like Brooke was saying. So you can start with the end in mind, if you know what that is, or you can start where you are and just say, I don't actually know what, what the end is, but you know, I know what the next step is. I know one thing that I can do. You know, somebody, uh, said they were learning Spanish. Somebody said Cantonese, other languages. Well, there are methods to learning languages. Um, but at the same time, if you don't have a method, you can also like, there's probably some steps you can think of, you know, um, to take those steps and, and to, to move forward. Let's see here. Um, Christine has a comment about active versus passive learning for over a year. I've had a habit to learn something during my lunch every day. Um, it's just often reading a chapter in a biography. Um, that's good. Mm -hmm. Um, John, very long comment here. I'm sorry to take up your whole screen here, but I, it's a good comment. So I wanted to feature it. John said, always felt like round peg trying to fit in square holes. Um, he's got a couple of book recommendations, relearning why the tiger woods route isn't best route for many of us. Um, yeah, I think it's always interesting about like following other people's models, you know, somebody, especially somebody like at this level, like the highest level of something, what works for them isn't necessarily going to work for, for you or for me. Um, and part of, part of why they have been so successful often is because they have found their own path, right. As opposed to following other people that were very successful before them. Um, another Christine says she's been trying to learn French. Um, Penn is learning how to be married. Rafaela, Spanish classes. Awesome. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. TikTok. as a Gen Xer. It's not my thing. Hello, Gen Xer here. Uh, but my niece convinced me it would be good for my side hustle. It's always good to learn, right? It's good to, it's good to, even if you're not going to be like, you know, the, the TikTok influencer, um, it's always good to learn stuff. Sandy is learning the violin slowly. Well, it's a slow thing to learn. Randy is learning blockchain technology. It's great content, copywriting. I think more and more people are starting slowly starting to understand blockchain. I think for a while blockchain was like a scam, not like a real scam. Cause I understand it's a real thing, but it was a scam in the sense that you could just say blockchain. Like if you were talking about something and people would think you're really intelligent, you know, or they would all of a sudden it would be like, if you're talking about some app or something, you're like, Oh, and it uses blockchain technology. All of us, it, it's like elevates the whole thing. Like, oh, okay, wow. Even though nobody knows what it means, right? And now it's people are actually learning, so that's good. But for a while, oh, I saw that David said how to disassemble an engine. Okay, by necessity, and also that mental health and short-term goals are key. Also by necessity, that's great. Um, how to dis disassemble an engine does not sound fun uh, to me, but hopefully that's a learning experience. Um, okay. So I had an audio question from somebody who was, um, um, well, actually let, let me not even, let's not go into it cause I'm not going to be able to do it, but I'm going to save it for next week. We will do it next week. Um, it will be helpful and interesting. 
Um, before I go, I'll take a couple other comments in a moment, but let us see. So the daily challenge actually here, um, it doesn't necessarily connect to learning, although you might learn something from it. Um, but the daily challenge is um, to ask for something that you want um, because a lot of people are not good at asking. And you know, if there is something that you want, which I'm pretty sure there probably is, like there is something that you want, um, my challenge to you or my encouragement is, you know, to try asking for that and see, see what happens. And maybe the answer is no. Um, but first of all, the answer could be yes, or the answer could be somewhere in between, or it could lead you to something different, or maybe there's more than one person or more than one company or whatever it is that you have to ask. Um, but I think you'll probably learn something through that process, even though that's not really what I'm talking about in terms of learning skills. I was just thinking about that um, last night as I was making some notes. I was like, I mean, people need to learn to ask more. Um, so I hope that you will, you will consider doing that. Um, and I hope that you will um, learn something just like I'm trying to learn. So yes, um, let me know what else is on your mind. Uh, oh, Sandy says, what is blockchain? Yeah, that's a, that's the thing. It's, 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 somebody else should explain blockchain, not me, because I'll probably do a bad job with it, even though I know a little bit now. Uh, Mary Jo said, I've been working on how to influence instead of arguing. You read the book influence I recommended a few weeks ago. Um, yeah, that's, that's definitely a good book and also something interesting to learn. Um, you guys are amazing. I'm seeing lots of comments. Sorry that I couldn't get to all of them here today, but I'm very grateful to, um, share this time with you. I'm doing these, uh, live streams every Tuesday. Um, every Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Uh, Eastern. Uh, if you miss some, you know, it's good. Come back next time or come and watch the archive because we always archive it um, every week. I'm also doing those um, Zoom calls that I mentioned uh, for the Third Way group. Let's see, did I have a link for that somewhere? Uh, maybe I actually have a slide for it. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, you have to sign up there, but it's free. Um, and we just send you an email that says when it's happening, aonc.co slash thirdway1. Um, you're also welcome to connect with me wherever you like on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. I used to always say, or your favorite airport, you know, cause I'll probably be there at some point. Um, but I'm not in a whole lot of airports at the moment. So hopefully, hopefully at some point soon, um, just before I wrap up, I know it's, um, it's still a difficult time for lots of people in lots of places. Uh, so I'm aware of that. Um, I think it's good for all of us to just be aware. You know, I always think about that quote of like, you know, everyone, you know, is fighting a hard battle. So whether it is because of coronavirus, um, or many of the other issues that's, that are happening now, or just something that's happening in your life, you know, uh, in your life, like just understand that we're all going through stuff. And, uh, the important thing is to keep going. So my encouragement to you is to try to find a way to use this time for good, even if other stuff is happening as well. Um, and once again, I'm glad to see you all today. So I'm going to wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you again next week. Thanks everybody. You're awesome.